Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Eliza. I'm the maker behind Boogie Bee Jewelry on Instagram, and today I am filming my first ever YouTube tutorial. This tutorial is on my favorite thing to do. It is the stained glass method, and I can't wait to share it with you. So let's just hop into the video. Let's go over the materials needed. First, we need a tile. This is what we're gonna work on. An acrylic roller and a pasta machine to roll out our clay. White clay for the lines translucent clay for the glass pieces, colored clay to stain the translucent, and then a blade, of course. I got my tile at Home Depot for like two, three dollars. You could also go to Lowe's, but it's great because the clay will stick to it and it's a nice even workspace. My acrylic roller has a metal handle and it's really, really convenient. I highly recommend getting one with a handle if you can. You can roll one-handed and keep your hands completely off the clay while rolling, so I love it. In addition to an acrylic roller, I really recommend a pasta machine. It's going to make conditioning the clay much easier and uniform. And this one is just the Atlas 150. It's not too expensive and it's lasted me a long time, so I recommend it. So to color our translucent clay, we do need some colored clay. Not a lot, just a tiny bit will get us by. And I do recommend using non-pastels, so really high pigment colors versus any white base. That's what's gonna give us the best color payoff when we're trying to dye the translucent clay. And I'm doing rainbow scheme right here, but you could do whatever colors you'd like. For the lines in our stained glass piece, I am using a white clay. You could do whatever color you'd like. I prefer white because it gives you a nice bright overall look in the finished product. I'm using Igloo Souffle by Sculpey. It's my favorite white brand overall. If you can find this in stock near you, I would pick it up because it is very hard to find. If you can't find it, you could do um, the Primo white or even the Fimo. Whatever, whatever you can find will work. For our translucent pieces, I am using the Primo Accents Translucent. They actually have two translucents in their line, this one and one called White Translucent. The only difference is the regular translucent has a slight greenish, yellowish tint. It doesn't give much of a difference except for obviously your blues and greens in its finished bake, but I don't mind it. I, I prefer either, honestly. So whichever you can get your hands on will work. Last, let's talk about our blade. This is the Sculpey brand tissue blade. I took the little handles off just because it's a personal preference, but you can keep them on if you'd like. You need this to be pretty sharp, so you gotta be careful. But we are making a cane, so we are going to slice into it with this. And if the blade is dull, it's going to warp the design. So nice sharp blade. And yeah, I think we're ready to go. All right, now we're ready to start with our clay. But first, we are going to clean down our workstation, wiping our tile down, all of our tools. Cleaning your blade is really smart. Sometimes you have a residue you might not be able to see. Before we cut into a white clay, it's really going to save you there. Wiping down the roller is really helpful. Sometimes there's leftover bits or little smudges that we can't see. And the worst thing is when you roll a slab with that and there's something there you didn't see and it ruins something. So cleaning down all of our tools, I highly, highly recommend. I already cleaned my pasta machine before starting, but I will wipe it down just one more time because there is a lot of dust and lint in the air. It's gonna happen while you're working with clay as well. We just wanna prevent it as much as we can. There are ways to clean clay after, but we want to prevent any airs or anything early on. So cleaning is a really important step. And next, I'm just jumping straight on in to the white clay. So I'm doing the white clay first because my hands are clean, my pasta machine is clean, and I'm not going to get as clean as I am right now because after this, I'm going to be mixing those colors into the translucent clay. So I'm just chopping off about half this block. That's how much I think I'm going to need to get the lines done, but I'm gonna go straight into conditioning the clay. Conditioning is the process of mixing all the ingredients back together in the clay. As it sits on a shelf, it does separate. So when we condition, we're really mixing those ingredients back together thoroughly to give us a good consistency and to give us a good bake. That's why we condition is so we don't have brittle pieces at the end of the process. So if you have brittle pieces or any kind of like breaking happening after baking, see if you're conditioning enough. Personally, I pass it through my pasta machine at least 20, even 30 times before I even start cutting or using clay for anything. I'm starting at my thickest setting for the conditioning, just the easiest on the arms at first. Once I get a few passes through that, 
I will start bumping up the machine to a thinner setting. This white clay is what makes the lines between the transparent pieces. So personal preference here, if you want thinner lines, use the thinner setting, thicker lines, thicker setting. So you can play around with it. I find that thinner works best because sometimes the white clay can get warped in between the translucent and will block the effect. So I'm on my Atlas. I think I had it at a six or a five. Sometimes I go all the way to the thinnest setting. It's again, you can play around with it and see how it looks. Now we're gonna condition the translucent clay, which can be very difficult. I've had a lot of people tell me that they can't get it conditioned. It's too crumbly and I know. Now I have a few tips to help with that, but in this video, I got the most amazing block of translucent clay, so you're not going to see me struggle in the video, which I apologize for <laughs> how easy I had it. But my advice for a really crumbly translucent clay is to hand roll that clay as thick as your thickest setting on your pasta machine. You wanna feed it through the machine at first with as little give as possible, if that makes sense. So when I say that, it needs to be almost to the same thickness as your pasta machine when you start feeding it. If not, that's when you get those crumbly, flaky pieces that are gonna fall all over your floor, on the base of your pasta machine, and that's how that clay gets so dirty. Even if you have a crystal clean workspace, that's how that clay will get so nasty that it, it's very discouraging. It's happened to me before, but rolling it with your acrylic roller till it is as thick as your thickest pasta setting before feeding it through, then start folding and passing it through the machine. That is going to eliminate the crumbles flaking off of it and it'll start crumbling slash adhering slash conditioning to itself versus just a big old puddle of crumbles. And that's not very pleasing, it sounds awful, but if you can get it conditioned, it is a great result. So I love translucent clay, but it is very difficult to condition. Real quick, I did just want to add that you can actually tell when your clay was made. If you look on either the side or the back, depending on the size, it'll have the production dates. So where I circled is where you're going to find that. The first number is the year followed by the month. So these clay blocks were made this year, meaning they're really fresh. If you're in store and you can grab one made this year, go ahead and do it. It'll be a lot easier when you're conditioning. And yeah, just a good little tip for you in case you didn't know. All right, now I'm just gonna divide up my clay. I'm doing six colors, so dividing it into six pieces. I eyeball it. If you want it to be perfect, go for it. I, I don't think it's necessary, but that is my opinion. So you do you. And yeah, I start with the color that's gonna dye my hands the least, which is that green. And I'm gonna show you how tiny I start out with. Do not do that whole ball. Like I said in the beginning, you do not need a lot. You're gonna use, I think I ended up using two pinches that size of the green, but you see how tiny that is? Super, super tiny. I'm trying to make sure it focuses. But then I just start feeding it through the machine. I mean, you can do all this by hand, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> You're going to kill your hands. So keep on feeding, conditioning until we get that all nice and mixed. So I'm going to check as I go, adding again, those little bits at a time. If I'm happy with the color, which I am. I'm gonna go back to my thickest setting, start feeding it through to eliminate any bubbles I might've added. One thing about translucent clay that is great, you can hold it up to a light, any light, even the flashlight on your phone will do it, and you'll see if there are bubbles in your clay. You can literally see these little air pockets and just keep conditioning till you get them all out. It's, it's honestly like the best part of translucent clay you can see what it's gonna be like when it's baked. All right, now we're all conditioned. I like the color, I'm ready, done messing with the green. I'm gonna roll it into a snake. So 
There is no technical way that I can tell you that works best. I like using my hands. Of course, you could use your table if you'd like, but the heat of my hands really helps with the translucent clay. And then once it's at a decent thickness, not too thin, not too thick, I'm gonna set it down and start on my other colors. When you put it down, it's gonna let it kind of cool down a little bit so it's not super hot and gooey. Cause like I said, I had a really good block. So my clay was like, it was, it was translucent gold, honestly. I, I wish everyone could get a block like this and it, it would be amazing. And I'm just going through the rest of my colors. I'm gonna speed us up cause we don't have to watch this, but whatever colors you're doing, mixing them, doing it little by little, holding it up to the light to make sure it's all good and conditioned and it's a color that you like. That's about it. So I will see you once I get all my colors mixed up. All right, I'm getting that last color all nice and mixed up and rolling it into its snake. So when you're rolling these, try to keep them similar lengths and widths just so you're getting similar little cells of the color. But if you wanna do like square shapes or triangular or even use an extruder, you could. This is just how I do it and I love how it kind of turns out a little different and special each time. But you can take this method and play it up differently if you'd like. And now we're gonna wrap these up in the white sheet. So when I wrap these colored snakes in the white, I wanna do it as neatly as possible, meaning eliminating any air pockets and trying to get the seam as perfect as I can. So if you overlap the white where they meet, you're going to get a different thickness of line around the colored portions. So you wanna try to get it as even as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> That's kind of my theme. It, it's handmade, okay? So it's as perfect as you want to make it. I just try my best and that's all you can do. So just roll and then when you touch the white to the white and then pull it back a little bit, you're actually gonna see a little indentation line and that's where you can cut. So take your blade, chop, and then finish wrapping it up. Try to rub the seam a little bit with your fingers just to seal it really good. And yeah, that's that. All right, and before we start reducing this, this is your chance to make sure all your pieces are relatively the same size and thickness. If one's a little bit shorter, maybe roll it a little bit thinner. And yeah, we're gonna just get right into squishing these guys together. So you can do specific colors touching if you want. I'm not doing that, they're just random. Wherever they lie is wherever they end up. And I am just gonna pick it up and start using my hands. But if you see, I kind of left a little space to show. You can make a little flower pattern. You can do really cool stuff. I mean, if you wanna make an actual stained glass scene, that would be amazing. I just love this random like mosaic style for this. And yeah, let's squish it. <laughs> I'm using the heat of my hands to really get it going. So when you have that really flaky translucent clay, the heat of your hands is gonna help it get along. That's literally how I picture it. Like it doesn't get along, I gotta force it together so they bond with each other. And then I'm gonna start using my hands to get it a little bit more uniform. All right, and just using my hands and really rolling down my palms back up my fingertips, that's how I'm gonna get an even as possible roll by hand. And then this is about like two hands width, really. You can keep going. It's just gonna give you um, a longer and smaller cell, but I'm kind of seeing how the size is right now and just chopping it down the middle with my blade. And then, wow, look at that. Ooh, so pretty. So you could stop here, you could cut that up, you could start making your slab. I'm gonna reduce mine a little bit more. I kind of did it bigger than I normally do. I just do one more. Normally I do like three, four reductions and get really, really small cells. Now, here's the thing. If we push together right there, you're gonna get your orange to your orange, your green to your green, your yellow to your yellow. So you can kind of twist it around and manipulate it. That's gonna manipulate your cell shape and it's going to uh, change what colors are touching each other. So 
that's all again a personal preference and it honestly is trial and error to see how that shape is going to morph and once again i'm using my hands to give it a good squish first really using the heat coming from my body to meld those two together and now you see i'm actually forming it into a square so when i first started doing this technique i would use a round cane and then when i made my slab i would push them together rolling it into a square is much easier you know a square fits to a square versus a circle you're going to morph it up so i'm just squishing it into a nice square squishing those two snakes together and i'm going to do one more chop just to see how my size is looking do i like the size of the cells or do i want them smaller and there it is i love how this one turned out it's very like angular and really cool shapes in there so yeah i'm happy with it i'm just gonna push these two together to get a really good square start using the heat from my pans to get them all bonded together and you'll see right there where i'm pointing um the butts of the cane that's where if you're more uniform when you're making your snakes you're gonna have a more usable end it's okay though i'm just gonna cut that off and i'll use it for another piece it's not a big deal and yeah i'm just gonna keep on reducing and i'm grabbing my roller this is the best way to get a square shape in my opinion just take your roller and start reducing it doing even pressure and rolling on each side and turning it you're gonna get a beautiful square and just a really good cane because all the pockets of air that could have been in there are getting pushed out out of the ends and pushed together and yeah it's awesome I, I love using the roller for this i highly recommend it and as you see it is a white outside still and like i said in the beginning white clay can get kind of dirty with the clay being exposed to the air and lint and dust it's inevitable to try to clean it off you can use acetone and a q-tip and just clean the outsides if this were like a big batch and i was making this for my shop that's what i would do for the video i'm just going to keep on trucking and keep on reducing this cane so another way i kind of decide when i'm done just to help you out is when i start seeing the color bleed through the white so much i typically stop there I could keep going like those lines they'll just get thinner and your cells are going to get smaller but i'm stopping here if you want to keep going to get smaller little cells and lines go for it now next we are going to cut it um, if you work with canes a lot you know that you typically cool it down a bit i don't want to get this too cold because translucent clay is a little bit difficult so i pop it in the freezer for like five minutes and after we get that out of the freezer not too long just so it's a little bit cooler and gives you a nice clean cut we're gonna take our sharp blade and go chopping this cane now i am eyeballing it there are rulers cutting mats with measurements there are even cane slicing machines you can buy off etsy and i think lucy clay has one i'm just eyeballing it to be a slightly thicker width than the setting on my pasta machine so when i roll this through it's not going to distort the shape too much and yeah make them as uniform as you can still so they all look the same versus each other regardless of it getting distorted you might want it to be distorted that's that's up to you but as the white lines shift it could block the effect of the translucent clay so that's something to keep in mind when you are cutting and there is our beautiful design out and ready to be put into a slab we are just going to connect these pieces like a puzzle and i'm going to do that and i'll give you some tips once we get to the end so real quick i want to say you see how i kind of have a skew line right there it's not too square shaped taking my blade and just pushing up against it is going to straighten the line back out to set me up for my next row this helps bond those pieces together so we don't get any cracking once we feed it through the machine 
and again it's gonna set us up better so you see that jagged line really it's not a line it's uh not a perfect square at all taking the blade i do the blade side touching the tile see how i almost didn't do that that's so i don't cut myself okay so taking the blade side down i just give a good little firm press against the clay All right, now we've got this beautiful stained glass rectangle going on. Just trying to make those lines as nice as I can with the blade one more time. And just um, trying to blur some of the edges together. Because, again, I eyeballed it when I cut it. So some of them are a little bit thicker. That's okay. So taking my roller, I'm going to wipe it down one more time. I don't want anything ruining this beautiful work that we just did. And I'm going to start rolling it flat not too flat we're still going to feed it through the pasta machine this is just to get it kind of get them acclimated before we do that final press and it's going to make it so when we pull it off the tile we don't have any breakage and that's one more time where i'm going to say when you've got really flaky translucent clay sometimes you pull it off the tile and half of it will come off and half of it will stick to the tile so this is a good step to really get everybody all comfortable and stuck together and happy before we pull it off the tile now i'm just taking that blade i'm holding it flush as possible but this is really thick so it's kind of hard to do and just sliding it and popping that bad boy off and then wow you pick it up and it is just beauty you feel so proud of yourself you should be it's beautiful we still got one more thing to do we're gonna feed it through our pasta machine and here she is oh she's so pretty don't be shy tell her she's pretty she is so this is unbaked obviously i just couldn't wait to show some of the light shining through this beauty and we still got a lot to do we gotta cut it we gotta bake it we gotta sand it we gotta assemble it and then we gotta wear it right so that is a whole cluster of content and future tutorials that i want to make and I just hope this one was good. It was my first one. I hope that it was helpful. If there's anything that I could do better, please let me know in the comments, but also let me know what kind of videos you wanna see next. That's what I'm gonna get to. It just, it's all up to you, really, it is. And that's that. These are the earrings I was able to make myself, but if you try this out, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram and I'm gonna share some of my favorites in my next video. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of any new content. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you real soon. <laughs>